Darwinism is an incredibly touchy subject. It doesn't seem so, but it's one of the topics that are frankly forbidden insofar as polite conversation is concerned. And you have to understand why. You have to understand that Darwinism is likely correct, but since it goes against the prevailing political narratives of both the left and the right, by the way, because of this, Darwinism is anathema, and yet it's the truth. And so you have to study Darwinism and understand it, and yet at the same time, you can never talk about it. First of all, what is Darwinism? Oh, it's very simple. It's basically two theories, natural selection and sexual selection. Natural selection is the idea, the theory, that an organism will adapt to its environment and the ones that more successfully adapt to their environments will likely reproduce, uh, which seems perfectly sensible. Yeah? If uh, an animal is adapted to cold weather because the environment is very cold, you know, the ones that are thicker skinned or have more fur or whatnot will likely live longer and therefore reproduce. That's the key issue. See, the animal has some mild genetic variant such that it gives it the ability to survive, survive long enough to reproduce. That's natural selection. Sexual selection, on the other hand, is whereby males competing for females will display certain traits and attributes and whatnot, and the females will choose which of the males they find most attractive for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. And therefore, that male will reproduce and presumably pass along this particular trait that the female of the species finds more attractive. That's why, for instance, you have birds, for example, that have very colorful feathers or bullfrogs that are able to emit these very loud noises because it attracts females. The peacock, that's a perfect example. A peacock's feathers are from a survival sense perfectly stupid, but they attract the female. And that's why they have these colorful, colorful feathers. See, that is sexual selection. And it's very different from natural selection. Yes, of course, because you see something, some trait, some attribute can be very attractive to the female of the species and yet lead to the extinction of the male. For instance, like I said, the peacock, the peacock's train of feathers, right, makes it hard for it to run away from predators. And so there's always like this balancing, this balancing act between those attributes and traits that will ensure the survival of the species and those attributes or traits that will ensure that the males reproduce and pass along this trait. Now, this is all good and fine, but how is it that this connects to contemporary politics and why is it that you can't talk about Darwinism? Oh, very simple. You see, when you start looking at Darwinism, it seems like a very sensible theory as to how come certain uh, individuals of whatever species survive and flourish and pass on their genes and why others do not. But the thing is, see, the implication is when applied to human beings, and this is where we get into trouble, that some human beings, some subgroups of human beings, are better adapted to their environment and therefore will flourish. And that's where we run into problems. It's actually a historical problem because you see, Darwinism was invented by Charles Darwin, of course, in the 19th century. And a lot of the political theory that govern us, governs us today in the democracies of the West, well, they were invented in the 18th century and sometimes in some certain cases earlier. And these political theories presume certain things that fly in the face of Darwinism. For instance, a, a typical example, equality among all men. A Darwinist would laugh at the concept of all men being equal. Laugh in the face of anybody foolish enough to say that because it's demonstrably not true. Different men and women, for that matter, are different in different abilities, in different areas. And so because of this, see, it flies, Darwinism flies in the face of political orthodoxy on both the left and the right. See, the left 
What does it want? It wants equity. It wants everybody to be the same. And Darwinism basically says that that's impossible, that every individual is going to be different. And because of that, some individuals are going to be more successful. But on the other hand, the right says that all men are created equal and they are endowed with natural rights, inalienable rights. But Darwinism would say, no, that's not true either. It's just survival of the fittest. The strong survived. You see how on both sides of the political equation, Darwinism is anathema because it laughs and mocks both ideologies, both on the left and the right. Now see, this wouldn't matter at all insofar as the left-right dichotomy is concerned were it not for one little fly in the ointment. Darwinism is essentially correct. We are not all the same. On the contrary, we are radically different. And we notice it all the time. We see some people that we consider trashy, of whatever race, by the way. I'm, I'm, this is not race specific. This is all races, be they Asian, African, European, Tasmanian, whatever, I don't care. We all recognize, even within our own ethnic group, that there are some people who are just trashy. They're trashy, they're just lower. Mm -hmm. They're not as clever, not as capable, not as X, right? And we know this, we know this to be true. We know that not all people are created equal. And Darwinism would say, yeah, sure, exactly. You know, <clears throat> not all individuals of any species are not equal. Uh -uh. Some are more equal than others, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem. The truth is Darwinism. Darwinism is a theory that accurately reflects reality. But the problem is that our political organization is structured around some comforting lies, some lies that would be destroyed, annihilated by anyone taking Darwinism seriously, as you should. But the problem is, of course, that if you were to do that, if you take Darwinism seriously and apply Darwinism to the left-right dichotomy, to the political organization of the Western democracies, yes, you would win the argument but the problem is that so many people believe these comforting lies that you will alienate yourself from them and they will hurt you badly. I've never interacted with Stefan Molyneux, but I can tell you that Stefan Molyneux, who is a committed Darwinist, well, what happened to him? He got deplatformed from every single online platform there is to be on. Yeah. Uh, Twitter and YouTube and all the rest of it. He had nearly a million subscribers on his channel. I mean, just shy of a million, which kind of sucks because he didn't get that one million uh, subscriber play button, yeah? But, but he got kicked off the platform, yeah, because he was a Darwinist. And insofar as Darwinism is concerned, it's anathema. And the more Stefan Molyneux said things that are true, the more they hated him. I'm not a big fan of Molyneux. I think that on a personal level, he's kind of like a dick. And I really despise his money grubbing and mocking people who are kind enough to donate a dollar. I mean, come on, you know, you guys on Patreon donate to me and I thank you. You have no idea how much I thank you. Thank you individually. And there are some patrons who can only give me a buck and I thank them. Yeah, because it's a buck that they are giving me. They are saying, your work is good enough that I want to contribute this dollar. It's all I can afford. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart, and I say this sincerely. Stefan Molyneux was such a big asshole that he mocked some guy who gave him a buck. He, he took out a dollar bill and just like flung it around and said, what am I going to do with the dollar? It doesn't matter what you can do with the dollar. It's the spirit of generosity of the person, but it doesn't matter. The point, the point about Stefan Molyneux and I, you know, rant about the guy over. Well, see, Stefan Molyneux talking about Darwinism, because that's what he was basically doing, okay? Sometimes he didn't really say it. He tried to pass off what he was saying as some deep inside of his, and it really wasn't. He was just regurgitating Darwinism. But because of that sin, that he was saying things that were true, he got shit canned. Whenever you come across a theory that might be true, you should examine it, examine it carefully. And of course, the more you examine a theory, 
And the more that theory stands up to reality, I mean, uh, what does that mean? It means that reality conforms to this theory and the theory makes certain predictions. And when you go out into the world and, and you wait around and the prediction comes true based on that theory, then you say, hey, that theory works. That's the whole point of a theory. A theory is a way for you to grab a handle on reality because reality is pretty big. And we have to have a way, a heuristic to understand all the things that are going on around us, right? And that's the point of it. Darwinism is a very powerful theory. And it's a very powerful theory because now we're coming up on, I, I think it's like 170 years of Darwin's uh, theory of uh, species, or I forget the name of the book, but it doesn't matter. It's 170 years of it. And, and has he been disproven? No, he has not. Has every other competing theory been disproven? Yes, they have. No theory can ultimately be declared the truth. A theory is always contingent because if new data appears that goes against the theory, then you got to throw out the theory, right? That's how it works. That's the scientific method. For 170 odd years, Darwin's theories have held true. Natural selection and sexual selection. So it's more likely than not that what he is saying and the implications of what he is saying are accurate. This is what happened to poor James Watson. Another example of a big brain that got canceled, much bigger than, uh, than Stephen Molyneux. James Watson was the man who discovered DNA, the d double helix. He won the Nobel Prize for it. And he takes Darwin seriously. And he said so. And he said so and they stripped him of everything. Oh yeah, he is anathema. I mean, if, if they could, they'd wipe his names from the biology textbooks that state the obvious fact that he was the one who came up with the insight of what DNA was. Hmm? They hate his guts because he said the truth and therefore he should be an example to you. Molyneux, Watson, what's the example? You shut your mouth. You see what's going on. You understand what's going on, but you shut your mouth. Because what benefit do you get by talking about Darwinism and rubbing people's nose in the truth? What do you get out of it? Hmm? Ask yourself that question. I mean, you should always ask the question, what do I get when I say X or when I do Y? What do I get from it? Is it something positive or is it something negative? If it's something positive, go ahead, by all means, talk all you want. If it's negative, then what's the point? Why are you doing this? Huh? I mean, you gotta think here. The environment, the society that we are living in today, you step on the wrong toe, you say the wrong thing in the wrong tweet, the wrong Facebook uh, post or whatever, and your life can be ruined. Think, think. I mean, it's awful to have to say this, to basically tell you guys, don't speak the truth. Because that's what I'm basically telling you. But sometimes you gotta know which hill you wanna die on. Hmm? Sometimes you have to make the cold, hard decision as to whether to speak the truth and be annihilated for it, or whether to keep your counsel and continue on, you know, knowing the truth, but not telling other people about it. Darwinism is the truth. The more you talk about it, the worse it'll be for you. Now, long ago, I sort of like made my peace insofar as how I was gonna handle this particular issue, okay? Because Darwinism is the truth. And sometimes in some of my videos, it sort of like seeps in there and you sort of like see it, but I try to keep it to myself. And some of the videos where I was more Darwinian, if you will, I cut them. Yeah, of course, because it would serve no useful purpose. It would serve no useful purpose and it would just hurt me. It would be ammunition to people who would like to silence me or deplatform me, which is an ongoing concern. Because you see, the whole idea of the red pill, yeah, I know it's cringy. Don't tell me it's not, I know it's cringy. But it has a practical purpose. It's to be pragmatic. Darwinism is pragmatic. It's real, it's true or it's as true as any theory can be shown to be. Hmm? 
And the, what I love about Darwinism is that it's pragmatic. It looks at the world as it actually is, without blinders, without rose-tinted glasses, or black-pilled glasses, to mix my metaphors. I mean, you see what I'm saying here. It looks at the world as it actually is, and that's what I believe in. That's what the whole concept of the red pill is. To look at the world as it actually is, as ugly as it may be sometimes. Darwinism certainly shows that human life sometimes is fairly ugly. It makes us lose our illusions about life, about human life, human society, human dignity. Basically, Darwinism says there is no such thing as human dignity. There are no such things as natural rights. What you have is just animals competing with one another to survive and to reproduce. It's an ugly way of looking at the world, but it's the truth. Now, it's up to you to decide for yourselves whether you're going to look at the truth, look at reality accurately, without rose-tinted glasses, or if you're going to swallow some pretty lie. Mm -hmm. If you are going to look at the truth as it actually is, recognize that if you talk the truth, you will suffer. Therefore, be smart. Look at what there is to be gained by speaking the truth, and look at what can be lost by speaking the truth and make up your mind carefully, like a grown-up, like a man. Don't be foolish.